Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome back to the shop. Take a look at uh, something I picked up here today and we'll see if we can do anything with it. On the table here before us we have this Pratt & Whitney vintage uh, electro limit gauge. Uh, I like the way this thing looks. It was cheap enough that I figured I could waste money on it and see if I could get it to work. All the cool kids uh, like Robin and Steve Barton and them have those fancy uh, electrical reading gauges. Oh, I haven't seen them. I believe this one here is for doing bores. Uh, you can use like uh, depth gauge attachments on this to uh, accurately measure bores. So this would be handy for doing engine blocks and stuff because this reader would actually go into the bores even uh, cam bearing holes and stuff you can stick them in there or cylinders it's got uh, i assume depth inches marked on the side here so you can measure from one to five deep uh, relatively close it's an interesting looking mechanism for sure i'll have to see if i can find out any more about that but uh, the main thing I do is uh, get this box apart and see about putting a new plug on it. So let me tear into it and I'll bring you back. Well, it didn't take much to get into it. Two screws and the cover was off. I'm surprised at how good it looks in here, really. Uh, considering this thing is bound to be from the 40s or 50s, I would say, by looking at it. Uh, quite likely the 40s. This is very easily a World War II item. And uh, it looks in awesome shape. Kind of surprised. I figured that there would be uh, maybe some smoke let out in here, but it's not looking that way. But uh, I'll have to undo this plate and get it out so I can see about getting a plug on here. Check it out, 1940s twisted pair. I don't know what point that really became uh, commonplace in electronics, but uh, there's some early version, I'm probably sure. Well, I guess we're ready to see if I let the smoke out or if my wiring job's a success. So, I think this thing had an on switch, so I guess just plug it up. No explosions, guess that's a good sign. There's a reading. Oh, look at that. Looks like it works. No doubt it needs calibrated, but uh, I have to get some uh, rings to do that with. You can adjust the magnitude so that your tenth reads right. You got a zero oh, set knob. Pretty sweet. Well, now I've seen this has worked, uh, I can go ahead and start putting it back together the way that it belongs. So I've got a power cord here, start running it through the grommet. I don't want to be able to pull on the inside, so I'm going to wrap tape.
It'll be good where they won't pull back through. Yeah. Well, let's plug it up and see how I did. Hopefully no smoke comes out. Now well, it looks to be reading. Gauges to test this with, so I figure why can't I just use a micrometer and I'll try and crank in a thousandths and see if it reads a thousandths or if I need to adjust this gain up or down or whatever to get it to read right. So, see if this thing's even usable or if it reads in some unknown units. Five. I look pretty close to zero from here. Maybe a little off from the side y'all are on, but. So, let me dial in. Let's just go ahead and go five thou. It's five thou on the mic. Accent, huh? Not ain't bad. Maybe just a little bit past. Right there, I'm on five, which reads four. Dial in five. Minus one, so that's reading right. Five more. Right there, minus six, so it's like it's calibrated, at least according to my mic. Divisions are coming up as a thousand, so rather than a tenth, I don't know why that is. It's got to do with this gauge or 
something in the box. Or maybe they had more additional lines on there at one time. Tell you a little what this thing can be used for. Uh, got this engine block sitting here and this cam bore happens to be about the right size for the anvil that's set up on this. So, uh, I got it set, put it up in the bore. Try and get this zeroed out here for you. A lot of you like to look at gauges on zero. That's how pretty much is. Take it out of the bore. Put it back in. Well repeats. Just under three inches of bore there, depth I can measure. Looks like it's probably within a half a thou over that length, roughly. In that direction, let's check it sideways. Pretty much the same. See when I go all the way through the bore. Come right back. Check the one on the other end of the block. And get you zoomed in on the gauge, maybe you can tell what's going on. So it's measuring right about the same. Maybe a half out under. Check it sideways. We're about the same, but 
Well, I think it's going to prove to be quite the handy uh, measuring tool to add to the arsenal. Uh, measuring internal bores is some of the more difficult stuff to do accurately in the machining world. And this, I think, will definitely be able to help that out. Uh, it's nice being able to play in the bore to find your low number and see it on the gauge real time versus using snap gauges. It's a, just a one shot deal. And you know, you do as many times as you can and try and average it out to determine what it is. But this looks like it works pretty good as far as uh, checking that stuff. So you'll be able to see this in probably in some future videos. And then I'm uh, tickled to death that it looks like all it took to get it going was a power cord. I'd love to have the anvil set that's made for this tool uh, but to do the different lengths and everything, but I might just have to make that stuff myself or maybe uh, some of the depth gauge stuff I've got will fit and work for the same process. We'll just have to see as it goes along. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll catch you later. <clears throat> if you heard a lot of noise in there while I was filming, this is why we're having another one of those crazy winds. But so far the roof over here is holding. Just hope it doesn't change directions and start working on the other side.